It's delivery day. The first batches of the Oxford AstraZeneca jab arrived at hospitals today. More than half a million doses will be available from Monday as the scramble continues to ramp up production to the vast levels needed. Well, what this does is it allows us to focus on the most vulnerable people and make sure they're protected uh, you know, from this disease. Um, and ultimately, that's going to keep people well, but it's going to reduce the pressure on the health service you know, over the next few months. With that, many doctors are unhappy at the government's insistence on getting out at least one dose to people rather than two. Clearly the shortest route to protecting as many as quick as possible. Yes, I think it is that simple. Uh, the other side, if I have to give it some credibility, is that people will be disappointed in the delay to their second dose. But that to me seems a very small disappointment compared to the lives that we will save by vaccinating as many people as quickly as we can with a first dose. Over a million people have already received a dose of the Pfizer jab. The UK led the world here but it requires ultra-low refrigeration. Simple manufacture and supply at required scale for both jabs remain enormous challenges. Every campaign requires three things to come together at the same time. Supplies of vaccine, supplies of people to vaccinate, and supplies of people to be vaccinated. Get all three of those working in huge numbers, you'll have success. That massive struggle not helped by scenes like this in Brittany on New Year's Eve, where two and a half thousand people gathered for an illegal rave in a disused warehouse. Some were British. Police were attacked when they broke it up and issued on-the-spot fines. But the authorities in Rennes are continuing their investigations. And this side of the channel, outside a major London hospital, an A&E doctor coming off shift on scores of people who he said had gathered without masks and many were shouting COVID is a hoax. That said, the UK's start to immunisation compares well globally. France has achieved a fraction of UK numbers. Neighbouring Germany is better but struggling with red tape in its federalised government system. In the Netherlands, immunisation won't begin until January the 8th in what's being described as a national embarrassment. Indian authorities are just now approving the AstraZeneca jab. As for the USA or Brazil, underfunded, badly organized, a mess. But here, with the NHS about to face its most intense period of pressure, there's zero complacency about the scale and speed required for the rollout of the second immunization to come on stream. Well, joining me now is Charlotte Summers, who's the frontline ICU doctor in Cambridge and a member of the Intensive Care Society, which is the professional body for intensive care staff across the UK. Uh, Dr Summers, thanks very much for being with us. Um, we know frontline ICUs under pressure, of course, now in a way that we've not seen since the spring. Where do you sense the real pressure points are going to come in the next week or two? So at the moment, we are experiencing in some areas of the UK, particularly the southeast, the east of England and London, increasing numbers of patients admitted to hospital and to intensive care with coronavirus. But we expect very much that those numbers are going to continue to increase over the next few weeks um, because of all the mixing that will have happened at Christmas um, and over the holiday period, um, but also as a consequence of the delayed um, period um, from lockdown. So it takes two or three weeks for patients who have acquired the virus out of the community to appear in intensive care. So everything we see now is from two or three weeks ago. So of, we will expect the numbers to keep rising. Of course. Well, let's get into that just a little bit. You use the verb increase. The numbers will increase. They surely will. Do you mean that actually they'll kind of stabilise in the crisis area of the South East, but that increase will, if you like, come as a wave out across the rest of England? Or, goodness me, could we see an increase in the South East and an exponential increase across the rest of England because of what you've just described, that time delay? So I think what we may see, and it is May because we don't know for sure, is an increase both in the South East London and the East of England, as well as that wave spreading out across the rest of the country. Well, political question to a doctor, grossly unfair, I know, but as you see it from your clinical perspective and your colleagues, is tier four working? 
I don't think that that's necessarily the question that I can answer. I think what I would say is that we all have a part to play in reducing the transmission of the virus and in making sure that the pressure on the NHS is as low as possible so that we are available to treat people with coronavirus infection and all the other things that present to hospital. We all need to play our part by following the hands, face, space guidance and the regulations for the tier in which we live. And given that we do that, what on earth is it that you're seeing now at your end at ICU units across the country? Is it, is it frankly like it was in March, April? So the pressure is definitely building in particular areas of the country, as I've said. And yes, we are having to stretch staffing ratios and to increase the amount of burden on the staff within intensive care who have been working exceptionally hard for some months now and who were asking to do exactly what they had to do in April yet again, but having been working harder than they've ever done for 10 months since then. Right. A very brief one here. Um, we know, obviously, that there's greater infectivity on these new strains of coronavirus. There's anecdotal evidence that younger people are getting it as well and becoming quite ill. Are you seeing that? So certainly colleagues in intensive care are reporting that we are getting younger and people who are previously thought to be fit and well appearing in our intensive care units, yes. Charlotte Summers, thanks very much indeed for giving us of your precious time. Appreciate it.